Hello there everybody, Sam Strange here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to one of my favourite videos of the year. So I can hardly believe that it's this time of the year again, but here we are, I make this video every year and here it comes for 2020. So this is the video where I take a look at my entire collection and I just love doing this because it's so interesting for me to be able to look back and see how things have changed over the years. There's not an awful lot to say as far as the introduction goes, I've got some new shelves to show you, so shelves are exciting, I'm sure you understand that, so that's something to look forward to. Most of the locos you're going to see I have reviewed already, but some of them I reviewed a really long while ago, so if there's any that you see that you'd like to see an up-to-date modern review on, please do let me know and I'd be glad to do that. Here we go though with a new shelf, let's get started. So like I say, this first shelf is brand new for this year. I don't know if I've showed this one before. It's actually screwed into a plasterboard wall as opposed to the solid wall on the other side of the room. Although to make it more sturdy, I have screwed it into the wooden beams behind the wall. So it is, I mean, yeah, while it is incredibly sturdy, as you can see, I've decided I would just load this with very light locos so that I don't pull the walls down or anything like that. But like I say, it's into the wooden framework. So it makes the perfect shelf for my tiny tank engines. And as you can see, we've got a whole load of those here. So let's go in and have a quick look. Oh dear, it's not a very nice way to start, is it this? We have the Helgen 1361, fair enough. Much better the next one. That is the Hatton's Andrew Barclay, the blue one. Then we have the J70 Rapido, absolutely wonderful. Smoky Joe, that one's a bit special, so it does get on the special tank engine shelf and not just in my little box of 040s. We have the B4, the Dapol B4, the Hatton's P-Class, in the grey uh, then we have the pecket by the way hopefully i don't get lots of these wrong if i do please let me know we have the electro train barracaldo very nice the old hornby terrier you can tell that's old just by looking at it really we have the steam sentinel another andrew barkley that one is katie of course with the big buffers and then we have the 1361 class the superior uh, djm version which i never expected to say then we have the Hornby Terrier, that's the new one, the Hornby W4 Packet, the Hornby B2 Packet, hopefully I get that right, I always call it a B4 for some reason. We have the LMYR Pug, and then another Andrew Barclay, but it's an 060 by, I think it might be Electro Trend, yeah, not too sure. Then we have the Hornby Built, which doesn't fit on my Thomas and Friends shelf, which is a shame, but fair enough. And then the beautiful SECR green version of the Hatton's P-Class. So here is another relatively newly founded shelf. I call this the 060 Tender Engine Shelf. Not sure if this one was here for the last collection video or not, but it's here now. So here we go. On the left-hand side, we have a few that don't fit in with the rest. We have the Colic Goods there. That's the mainline one. Uh, then the Lima 4F, I think that one is. That was very kindly sent to me by my friend Christian. So thank you, Christian. Then we have, it's a French loco for some description. I've forgotten now. I must say some of these 060s do look very similar so i'm going to struggle i think right what's this next one i think that one is a c class could be wrong hopefully not the next one's a lot more recognizable with the yellow lining there that's the j36 maud we have the oxford dean goods loco which is an absolute beauty here's one that i'm going to get wrong i think i reckon that is a 4f that's a backman 4f next one can't get that one wrong that is a q1 quite obviously then we have the hornby 4f again i recognize that one quite easily the drummond 700 class with the conical smoke box very lovely another q1 southern railways q1 obviously then we have i think that's the j11 because um, you can sort of tell by the shape of the cab somehow i don't know if that makes sense hopefully it does next up j15 where are we yeah that one the LNER J15, really lovely that one. Then we have the C-Class again, that is the lined green version. Sorry, it's got the green lining, that isn't lined green. Then we have the Colic Goods, that one's the Backman Colic Goods. That one I think is the Johnson Dealey 3F if you like. And then on the end there we have the Oxford Dean Goods in the khaki livery. So there we go, my 060 tender engine shelf. Okay, this next lot is going to be a bit of a whistle-stop tour because I don't think it's changed much since last time. So this is the Wren and Miscellaneous Diesel Shelf. So we have, first of all, the Helgen Class 52 Western at the back there, the Hornby 71, the Backman 08 Shunter, and the Helgen Metropolitan Bobo. Then we have the Hornby Class 73, that's the railroad version, the Helgen 128 DMU. And then going from the right, I have the Great Western Railcar from Lima. On to rent, we have the rebuilt West Country class, that one's Barnstable. Then we have two class, uh, castle, castle classes, <laughs> castle classes, Windsor Castle there in the blue 
and then Cardiff Castle, I think it is in the green. Then we have the three Duchess locos or city locos as they're sometimes called. So the red one there is City of London. The black one is City of Stoke-on-Trent and I believe the blue one there is City of Glasgow. I, I tell you, I'm not doing too bad today, am I? Then we have the Ren 8F, very lovely. Two A4s, we have Golden Eagle in the LNR green, Mallard in the blue. Then we have another rebuilt West Country, that is Lyme Regis. Then we have Plymouth, that is the unrebuilt version. Very rare, those. I love those. Two of the, I believe, standard four tanks in non-BR liveries, which is interesting. So we have the LMS Maroon and the Southern Line Green. Then we have the R1 060 tank engine and two N2s, which date way back to some of the very earliest Hornby Dublo locos, and they're quite interesting. So here we have one of quite a lot of shelves full of random tender engines, so let's get on to these. We have the Airfix Royal Scott, not one of my favourite locos, and it's on the end of the shelf there in the hopes that it might one day fall off. Uh, it did once, and it lost the buffer beam, which I need to put back on. Uh, yeah, not my favourite, like I say. Then we have, I'm going to struggle with this, it's probably the ROD, uh, the Great Western 280 ROD, not too sure. A lot of the Backman 280s look quite similar when you can't see them sideways on. Uh, that's my ignorance, sorry about that. Uh, we have the Hornby 2P in the S and DJR blue, which is lovely. Then we have, oh, I'm going to get these wrong. This one is either, I think it's a B1 or it could be, yes, it is. It's a Hornby B1. I'm going to stick with my first answer. Then we have the Backman Crab. There we are in the weathered black. We have the G2A from Backman. Lovely loco that. Then we have another crab, obviously, in the Crimson Lake. We have the IVAC Class 4, which is also a very lovely loco. The Hornby D16 in the LNER Green, the Backman K3, the Hornby Raven Q6, oh, very nice. Uh, then that, I believe, is the Thompson 01 from Hornby in the, uh, I think mine's BR Black actually. Then we have the Stania Mogul in the LMS lined black. Then we have the S15, and I'm going to change angle so I can get the last few in. I think that is a K1, that's the Hornby K1, I think it might be a K3, no it's a K1, K1, stick with that. Uh, then we have the Backman Standard Class 5, that's one of the few locos that doesn't actually run in my collection because the motor popped and I didn't want to pay Backman over £20 to get a new one. Then we have the Backman uh, Midland Compound in the black and the Hornby B12 in the LNER green. So there we go, miscellaneous tender engines, shelf one. So we've already had my tiny tank engine shelf, so now we're going to move on to what I consider to be my medium-sized tank engines. First of all, over on the left we have the Hornby 14XX, we have the Bankman USA Dock Tank, very interesting. Another Hornby 14XX right there, the Bankman J72, I want to say, yeah I think that's right. The 13, uh, no that's not the 1361, Sam, don't be silly. It's a pannier tank with the open cab, I forget exactly, uh, 2721, there we go, if my mind serves correctly. We have the Hornby J50 there, the Hornby H-Class, the J83, I believe, x triang but that's a more modern version. We have the Hornby, well, I was going to say Thomas, but it is the E2. It's just got its Thomas face on at the moment, but obviously I do have the proper smoke box door. It's up there for some reason. It's strange, isn't it? But, uh, yeah, they're interchangeable, which is quite good. Uh, then we have the DJM, I think, is it the J72? Oh, I completely forgot now. It's the Hunza Austerity. Okay, that's the easiest way to say it. Uh, we have the Lima J50 there, the Johnson 1F, or is it a 1P? It's a 1-something, an 060 from the uh, LMS. Then we have a J72, that is the older Backman Star 1. Then we have the Radio, the Radio Children. <laughs> <laughs> My mind is failing already. The Railway Children, Pannier Tank, okay. Then we have another Hunslot Austerity. I see, good save, Sam, good save. Then we have the Jinty in the S and DJR livery. We have the J13 in the GNR, I love that one. A couple of Jinties, a couple of Hornby Jinties, LMS Maroon, BR Black. Then this one is the Small Prairie, I think it is. There we go. And then the Airfix 14XX. So there you have it, medium tank engines. Let's move on to the large tank engines then. Okay, so you're going to have to bear with me with this shelf because it's very awkward to film and I'm sort of balanced on a chair for this. So if it gets wobbly or blurry at any point, I do apologise. Anyway, large tank engines. Let's get this over quickly so that I don't uh, give you all sort of motion sickness. So we have the Backman Standard 4 tank, I think it is. There we are, I'm wobbling already. Would you look at that? Standard 4 tank, the Oxford N7, the Web Coal tank from Backman, the Adams Radial tank from Oxford Rail, two of those in the Southern Green and the BR Black, I think it is. Uh, then we have the LMYR Class 5 tank, which is very lovely. Two, three. N7s, there we are, I'll just pan slowly across those. 
We have the Hornby L1 tank engine. That's that one with the lamps fitted, very nice. Uh, the Stania tank engine, that is the Stania Class 4, I think it is. Yes, I think so. And then we have the V2 or 3, I think it's, um, let's say it might even be 1, not sure. Yeah, it's one of the LNR tank engines. I will put in a title because it's inexcusable that I've forgotten that. We have the E4, and I'll know that one for you. Uh, the Fowler version of the 4P tank, which is also very lovely. We have the Large Prairie. Uh, at the time of filming this, I don't have the new one yet, so that is the old one, but hopefully I will have the new one by the time this video goes out. The Hornby Adams Radial Tank, which is lovely. The 56XX, I think it is. That is the 062, so it's a bit like the N2s, but Great Western. <laughs> Two of those. We've got Chris there over on the right. Then we have another 4P. That is another Fowler 4P. And on the end there, we have the Fairburn Tank. So there you have it, larger tank engines. Next up then, we're right up against the roof with Thomas and Friends. This hasn't changed very much since last year, so let's do another whistle stop tour. So we have Harry or Bert, not sure which one. We have the Backman Duck, the Backman Donald and Douglas. Backman, Bill and Ben, uh, they're one's part behind the other. Then we have Hornby James, Hornby Edward, Backman Henry, there we go. Backman James, Backman Bert or Ari, depending on what the first one was. I don't think they're any different, really. Uh, the Hornby Thomas, Mavis there, a pirate Mavis with a missing eye. Obviously, last time I serviced her, I didn't put her eye back properly. Sorry for the nightmares that that might cause. The Backman Emily, the Backman Gordon, the Backman Thomas, the Backman Edward, the Backman Percy, the Backman Rosie, the Backman Spencer, and I think... Toby would be very upset if I didn't mention him. There he is. Can we get him in focus? Sort of. Toby is back there. I'm just a bit shy, I guess. And almost forgot, right at the back there, we have Oliver. That's the backman, Oliver. Sorry, Oliver. It's not that you're not wanted or anything. It's just you are hiding. Up next then, we have my beloved old-timey collection of Triang Locos. Again, this hasn't changed much since last year, so I will do this quite quickly. So we have the B12, the Hiawatha Pacifics. They're the American type. We have the standard class 3, I believe it is, the Turbomotive, a non-official loco. We have the two Drummond single wheelers, uh, the Caledonian ones. Then we have the Dean singles. Across from there, we have the 2P. That will be the first ready-to-run 2P, as a lot of these locos will be, actually. Uh, the IVATs, they're the two IVAT class 2s, I believe, in the black and the green. Then we have the, well, again, that is the Caledonian single wheeler again, but in the maroon. Then we have the J83, you've seen that same model already, but a slightly later version of it. Then we have the Jinty, we have the two, I think there's two, yeah, L, L1s I think they are. Not the same as the tank engine, of course. Then we have some more of those Dealey slash Johnson 3F logos. Some pannier tanks there, we have the London Transport version as well as the Great Rest Western Green version. Next to that we have another Jinty and then three M7s. And I do have a soft spot for those old trying M7s, very much so. Okay, in front of there we have the Johnson 3F again, that's another of the same loco, just a different version of it. There we have the sort of fictional, sort of LSWR-ish um, saddle tank, another Great Western Green pannier behind that. An OH Hunter in the Southern livery, we have another of those open-topped um, 2721s, I think it is, something like that. Yeah. A couple more 08s in the BR Blue and the BR Green again, which is lovely. And a couple of those classic Dock Shunters in the black and the red, which I think are very, very classic models. Up next, we have the original Tryon Coronation class in the Crimson Lake, the Coronation Blue, and the LMS Black, which is a bit lesser seen. Then we have the Merchant Navies and Battle of Britons, four of those. We've got Golden Arrow, um, Winston Churchill, Spitfire, uh, all sorts, really. Uh, four different ones there. And then behind the beam, we've got some princesses, or Prince I, as might be the plural. Uh, so we've got them in the lined Crimson Lake, BR Black. And that green one that looks like a Hall class, uh, that's also a princess. Then we have four Hall class locos. I'm going to struggle to remember what these are. So, I mean, Lord Westwood's the easy one. We've got Albert Hall there, Nella Hall, and is it Hagley Hall, possibly? I could be wrong about that last one. Uh, answers on a postcard if I am. Two Britannia locos. We have Owen Glendower and Britannia herself, which is lovely. Three Flying Scotsmen. We have the LNER Apple Green, uh, another sort of Doncaster Green. They are two slightly different liveries, as you can see. I never quite know. And then we have the BR Green one, which is a bit more obvious. Then we have the S15s. We have the Southern Green S15 and the wartime unmarked black, which is great. 
and then we have another B12 there. I think that's a BR Black example. So lots of trying locos. So this next shelf is also new for this year. I don't think you've seen this before. It's quite a deep shelf, which makes it suitable for the larger tender engines, but there are some exceptions to that, as I'm sure you can spot. Uh, they might be driving you mad. Anyway, let's get on to these. So we have the recent Hornby Dean single, same as the trying one, just uh, a new release of it. The Hornby Standard Class 4 is the next one in. Then we have the Robinson 04, I think it might be, or is it the, yes, I think it is. Okay, next up we have the Jube. That is the Jubilee, very lovely. Three Hornby princesses up next. We have Lady Patricia on the left, and then two Princess Elizabeths, I think they are. Can you guess which one is the modern Hornby version? Mm, I think you can. I think you can just about tell, can't you? Then we have a Backman Atlantic. That is the H1 Atlantic. Then the exception. I mean, it's not a steam loco, but it is the Dapol Great Western rail car. All right. Then you have the D11. That is Mons, I think it is, in the lovely Great Central livery. Beautiful. A couple of duchesses. We have City of Nottingham and City of Stoke-on-Trent, I believe. Then we have a Patriot in the Crimson Lake. The Hornby 8F there. That's another sort of eight-coupled loco. Let's swing around a bit for these. Uh, then we have the two P2s. Um, so we've got the Hornby Railways one there, Hornby Railroad one next to it. And then we have Bachelor's Button, which is an A2, I think it is. I always get them mixed up, but uh, yeah, I think Bachelor's Button is the A2. Um, then we have the A1s, which are Tornadoes. We've had three of them, yeah. So we've got the BR Green, um, BR LNER mixture green, and then the BR Blue on the end there. So that is those. Next up then, it is the huge shelf. This is the biggest shelf I own, and it's where all the largest engines live. So with that, we've got the tiniest on the shelf. That is the Union Pacific 119. It's an old Backman one. Then we've got some coronations here. We have, uh, well, it looks like Duchess of Hamilton on the left, but it's not. Uh, either way, most of them are just, I think we've got Princess Alexandra in the middle, coronation on the right. And if I just have a quick look, it is City of Birmingham on the left. Okay, sorry about the slight cut there. Then we have the Hornby Henry. Again, I'm not really sure why he's there. He's just there because he fits there, I think. Uh, the Backman 7F across from there, that's the black one. Then we have the Hornby King Class in the BR Blue. The Hornby Merchant Navy also in the BR Blue. The Helgen Tango. We have the 2800 Class from Hornby there. Another Merchant Navy in the BR Green. Uh, the C1 Atlantic. When people ask me what my favourite is, I normally say it is that because that is a fantastic model. Uh, the Lord Nelson Class, next one along. I'd love that one. The B17, that is a Hornby B17. Two Hornby Super Detailed A4s. We have the BR Blue Golden Eagle and the regular Garter Blue Mallard, which is great. Then we have the Castle Class. Should be a haul. A lot of people correct me and say it's a haul class when I show this one. Nope, it's a castle. Uh, it's the Hogwarts Express logo. Then we have the Grange. Um, yeah, that one is in, I think it's a BR Green. Then we have the N15. That's a more modern N15 from the one I've already showed you. And here we have the Great Western 460s, which I'm not very good at recognising. So I will have to look at the names. If I recognise the names, I can tell you. So that's the Earl of St. Germans right there. That is a castle class. Then we've got Adderley Hall, that is the Railroad Hall class, which is very impressive. The Hornby King class, which is beautiful. I believe that one there is a star. And then we've got Pitchford, which is another hall. Uh, really, really good models, actually, for railroad range. Then we have Tangmere, that is the unrebuilt Battle of Britain, or West Country class. Then we've got some A1s, I believe we have the Woolwinder, that is the glossy version, and then we have Booklaw, which is the non-glossy version. Then we've got an A1, that is WP Allen, that's a Backman one this time. And then we have a Hornby Britannia, standard class 7, and a Hornby standard class 8 on the end there. Next up then, this is the oldest shelf in the room. This shelf's been here for about 20 years, long before I started the hobby. <laughs> uh, and before I start giving you the history of each shelf, which would be a very bizarre video idea, let's get on to these. So these are tender engines that have separate tenders that I can keep elsewhere because it's a very short shelf. So this is a mainline 460. So we have the Patriot, the mainline Royal Scott the slightly older Hornby 2800 class, the Gandhi Dancer, which I recently fixed, so at the moment it is working, but don't hold your breath. Then we have the Mogul, that is the 43XX, I believe, two Backman B1s, um, two Backman A4s, we have Silverlink and Golden Eagle, and then a Hornby A4, that's another older one, so Nigel Gresley. 
We have a Hornby, no, a Backman, Lord Nelson class, there you go. Uh, a Backman V3, you see this is what confuses me because there's a lot of locos that start with V and they're all <laughs> kind of similar to me. So yeah, I think that one's a V2, I'm going to guess, but I could be wrong. A couple of B12s, these are the older Hornby B12s in the BR Blue and the LNER Green. Then we've got the J39, I think it is, LNER 060 Manor class. Uh, that one is Broom Manor, a lot of people like that. The Midland Compound, there you go. The N class, that's the Backman N class. Another Great Western Mogul, same class, 43XX, I think it is, just different livery. Another Q1 there, and then the D49 over at the end. And the shelf up at the top there was obviously not designed for filming. My head is far too big to fit up there, so I'm just going to have to film them from below. Apologies for that, but there's not many. So very quickly, we have the Wego high-speed train from Mahano, the Backman Class 25, the Backman Derby Lightweight, the other coaches behind it, so it's just representing. A couple of American Locos, I think I called the one on the right Dash 2 at one point, but it's not one of those. Not sure what the one on the left is, you can let me know if you can tell. We have the Dapolt 73, another Mahano, that's the one that I also called a Dash 2, it isn't. <laughs> uh, the Backman 45, the Hornby 56 I believe it is, and this one which is, a, I don't think I ever found out exactly what it was, but it's a Kleinbahn electric with two motors inside, which is crazy. Also with two motors is the Garrett, there we go. Lovely Garrett from Helgen. All right, next up, another very high up shelf. This is my O-Gage shelf. Uh, not many Locos, I've only got four, so let's get to those real quick. So we have the Dapol Terrier, the Dapol 14XX, number 1426. That is so lovely. I've got my SNCF diesel, which is an old Lima one. A bit crusty, but it does work well, which is great. And then we've also got an old Lima 3 or 4F. I think it's a 4F, is it? Something like that. Um, again, quite a crusty old one, but it does work very nicely. And I spent a lot of time restoring it, so I'm quite fond of it. Okay, so the next shelf is some oddball locos. Generally, it is small diesel shunters and American locos with a few extra bits thrown in, just like this, the Backman bus. Um, I might have reviewed that by the time this video goes out. If not, it's coming soon. Then we have the Hornby Sentinel, the Hornby Ruston, the Backman 04. Four, I think it is, I could be wrong. Then you've got the Hornby, just the regular Hornby 040 Cola engine there. Then we've got the tiny little Wickham trolley, the Oxford Rail Janus. We have the, uh, what was that one? It's a little saddle tank anyway, um, a River Rossi one, I believe. Then we've got the Casey Jones loco, there we go. That's also River Rossi. Then we have the dreaded circle. I think the less said about that, the better. The Backman Brill Trolley. Then we have this mystery loco, which is a UF SNCF loco of some description. Then we've got the Backman Russian Decapod. A couple of generic Mahano uh, locos. We've got the 440 and the Camelback on the right. Then you've got the Backman Prairie, which is not a very pretty sight at all. So I'm glad you can't see that very well. And then a couple of Mahano Pacifics as well, which are quite nice engines. Uh, not the best runners, but I do have quite a soft spot for them. On the next shelf then, we've got small tender engines that are not 060s. So with that, we've got overexposed rocket here. Sorry about that, but uh, yeah, lovely new Hornby Stevenson's rocket. Then we, I think I must have missed the old Stevenson's rocket that was on the other shelf. Maybe I did. Then we've got the Duke Dog. Yeah, that's a Backman 440. Uh, another Backman N-Class. That one does have its tender couple at the moment. Uh, so that's why it's not with the other one. Then we've got another, um, I think that one's another D11 right there. Um, yeah, that's in the more boring BR Black. Then the Hornby Schools class. Again, BR Black. Uh, what was that one? Um, that's a, Oh, yes, that's the Dapol 2P. All right. Then you've got the another D16 this time, but in the LNR black rather than the LNR green, which I've already showed you. The lovely Malachite schools class there. Uh, a couple of T9s in the southern black and the BR green. It looks like southern green, but it does say British Railways on the tender, so it's sort of a, a transition loco, if you will. Then we have this one, which is either the 72XX or the 52XX. I uh, can't see without looking at the back, because besides the rear pony truck, they're just the same loco. Then you've got the Backman Ivax Class 2, that's the one. And then there's the other eight coupled um, Great Western Loco, or are, they, or are they 10 coupled? I don't know now, I think they're eight coupled, aren't they? Then you've got the two City Class Locos, uh, City of Truro on the right hand side and the City of Birmingham on the left. Both really, really lovely engines. 
And then down on the table here, I've got some bits and bobs. Some of them are locos that are just too big to fit on any of the shelves. And I've also got my 040 boxes out for you as well. First of all, though, we have the Canadian National Mahano loco there. It's quite a famous loco. Then we've got a Mahano Hudson there, the Backman Daylight, which is a really cool livery. I love that one. The Hornby Gordon, yep, go figure. The Polar Express type loco, it's the Backman Berkshire. Then I've got a Fleischmann 060 there, which is pretty nice. Backman Standard Class 5, Backman Standard Class 4, uh, the uh, War Department, I almost said Western Digital there, <laughs> hopefully some people will get that joke, that's a funny mistake, and then um, Camelford, which is another uh, West Country class, then you've got the Sprinter, uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that, or it might even be a Super Sprinter, uh, you can tell that I'm not a big fan, because I don't even know, um, nice looking model, but uh, cost me far too much, I thought. Down in front, I've also got another, of, I think it's another Juf uh, 282 locomotive, very kindly sent to me by one of my friends. Uh, I need to look at it at some point and see if I can't uh, get it working well. Um, but if you'd like to see it reviewed, let me know. It is very old and basic though, so I don't know how interesting it would be, but it would be nice to get it to run. And then for the 040s, there's not much sense in going over these in great detail, but just to point out a few familiar smoke boxes, I don't know. Uh, we've got the LSWR 040 there, we've got Gregsby, the ugly tank engine, and then the ghost engine from the Halloween special there. In the other box, we have my first ever 040 locomotive, and then we've got a few uh, trying ones there, which are quite nice to see. And then over here, we have uh, my Caledonian, that one is called Miles, and that's been converted now for solar panel use, which is why it's got that plug on top. And then you've got the Highland Railway 040 there, which is quite nice too. And then lastly, but not least, we have my Hornby Railroad Locos. So very briefly, here we go. We have the Midland Compound, the County Class. Some of these are going to be duplicated, by the way. A Schools Class, another Midland Compound. That's the black one. We have the B17, I think it is there. That's a 460, quite a recent one. Another County, Great Western County. Another D49, if that is another, in the yellow or green. Another Schools Class in the Southern and then another, yeah, that's the other D49 then in the LNR Black. Then we've got Gadwell, the A4, Mallard, the A4 this time in BR Green, and then the Flying Scotsman, I think, in A1 condition. And then down on the bottom, we've got 9Fs galore. We've got the original Hornby 9F, or oh, it's not original, but uh, it's the original railroad one, if you like. A couple of evening stars, the one on the left is a 9F that I actually, I don't think I've mentioned this, but I did actually drive a 9F in real life for one of my birthdays. Amazing experience, and I got that one from the model centre who converted it into the correct model that I drove for me, which is awesome. Then we have the evening star proper. You can tell that because it's got the different coloured uh, chimney. Then we've got the Franco Crosti 9F, which is quite interesting. The Hornby Black 5, the only Black 5 I own, which is um, quite nice, but very basic. I'd love to try a super modern one someday. Then we've got a few Patriots. I think they're Patriots. We've got Lady Godiva, and I think it is Bradshaw on the left there. And then we have the Hall class. Uh, I think that one's Alton Hall. The County class, County of Devon, I believe it is. And then a few railroad diesels there. Some of the few diesels I'm actually going to show today. We've got the Warship, the Class 40 with the TTS sound. And then the 47, I think it is over there in the Virgin livery. And that is it. <sighs> okay, there we go. Marathon over. So that was crazy. That's over 350 locos. And I think it's safe to say that I've got a bit of a problem. I don't think anyone would deny that. But this collection is my pride and joy. I absolutely love it. And uh, it's been going now for quite a few years. And it's something that I'm really proud of. So I hope you like seeing it. Of course, it isn't my entire collection. I do have cabinets all around the room full of diesels. I haven't showed them in this video because they haven't really changed since last year, but if you'd like to see some of the other diesels I've got, I'll include a link up there. For now though, as I say, let me know if there's any that you'd like to see me re-review, and I will certainly do that. For now though, thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you very soon. All right, cheers folks.